What's going on, everybody? Gentleman94 here. Welcome back to Ben Builds. This is build day number nine for the F-105 Thunder Chief. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm actually taking a bit of my pre-made uh, wash that I made with testers rubber and flat black with a lot of the airbrush thinner. And we're just going to kind of let this soak into the canvas area up front here. It's going to give it a nice dingy, dirty look, and it's going to darken it down a bit. The brown that I had used was a little too brown. I didn't much like it. So this is going to dirty it up, and it's going to bring down the shades a bit. I think overall... This is going to look pretty good. Uh, the main thing I'm going to focus, though, on today is pre-shading this aircraft. So let's talk a little bit about pre-shading. Now, if you remember back when I was working on the KV-1, I had mentioned the idea of pre-shading. And pre-shading is not something really that's too difficult to do. You don't have to be very exact with it. You don't have to be perfect. But what you're doing is you're taking um, some form of darker color and you're airbrushing over all the panel lines and this is going to give it a bit of depth and it's going to give it a nice little bit of a pop when you go ahead and put on the top coats. That being said, I can't use the exact same color. On the KV-1 build we used a color called NATO Black. It is a dark gray and green mixture that works excellently. Like for example Russian Tank Green works great for that. But it won't work for this. It's too cold of a color. We need something warm, something that's going to be able to complement the other colors on top of this. And there are going to be three different colors to be used on this top of this aircraft because that is the typical Southeast Asia camouflage. And it's going to be made up of light brown, light green, and a darker green. We're going to appreciate the entire kit with a red-brown color, and hopefully that will make it a nice warm color when we lay down the top light brown and the two subsequent colors after that. So we're going to go ahead. I've made up a nice, easy, quick mixture. It was just flat red-brown mixed with quite a bit of rubbing alcohol as our thinner. And we're just going to airbrush the panel lines here. And we're going to do it pretty quick. We're going to do it in fast motion here because it takes a lot of time to airbrush all these lines. So we're going to go ahead and speed it up just to get through it. Now, let's talk a little bit about color choice here when it comes to pre-shading. And, I mean, I'm no professional, but I have been taught that pre-shading is really designed to complement and to allow a bit of shadow so we're going to use this red brown like i said and it's a warmer color the three colors in the southeast asia camouflage they all seem to be very warm even the greens have a bit of yellow to them so again it's a little bit warmer color it's not so cool and cold like say gray because i think the red brown color is going to complement the lighter browns and the lighter greens and darker greens uh, very well so we're going to start here on the top of the aircraft, and we're just going to cover all the panel lines and all the recessed areas, hatches and vents and all of that, with this red-brown mixture. Now, in preparation for this, I actually did prime the aircraft, but I only primed the bottom of the aircraft. And there's a reason I did that. The main reason is because the very top of this aircraft is going to be covered with three layers of paint. It's going to have the first layer of light brown, then it's going to have a second coat on top of that of light green. And then on top of that light green is going to be a darker green. Now, I'm not sure exact placement of all these different colors. I need to look at the instructions and kind of eyeball it. I'm going to be using um, a system of masking. It's like a putty-like substance that you can bend and twist and stretch. So you can have long, flowing, curvy camouflage markings. I plan on using that, and that's going to give us a nice shift between the green, the brown, and the dark green. But until then, I'm not entirely sure where those, those different camouflage sections are going to be. So instead of figuring that out right now, I plan on shooting the whole thing with the light brown color. And that will allow some of this darker red-brown to kind of show through. But I will have to come back and I will have to take a little different shades of green and go over a couple of the panel lines. Because at that point, there's going to be three layers of paint over top of these panel lines and chances are they're not really going to show through. But this is going to be a good way to kind of start. Now the bottom of the aircraft was painted in a light ghost white type of primer. I uh, used actually Vallejo. And I'm also appreciating with the red brown because I think that will give a nice uh, uniform look. Now I've never actually built anything with a Southeast Asia camouflage pattern before. So I'm not entirely sure how it's going to work out. I'm hoping it's going to be good. I'm hoping it's going to look well and all that. But you never know. So I'm just going to try it. I'm going to see how it works out. Hopefully I'm going to like it. We want to make sure we hit all the parts. Everything that's going to be covered with paint, we want to make sure to appreciate it with the same color. 
I don't want anything sticking out like a sore thumb. So we're going to use a red-brown. We're going to pre-shade the fuselage, the wings, the tail surfaces. We're going to even do the drop tanks. Now, we're not using the centerline drop tank. We're going to ditch that for some bombs. But we're going to be using the same pre-shade on the wing drop tanks and on the pylons. Now, we have yet to build the centerline pylon, but that's okay because I think I'll come back I got to look at some pictures, do a little research to figure out exactly how far it needs to be down in the front and how up it has to be in the back. It's almost a little bit of an angle, too. If you look at pictures like side profiles of 105s, the centerline bomb rack is actually kind of hanging a little bit nose down. So we want to make sure we get that same, or at least roughly that same degree, you know, slant. I'm going to make sure we get these wing pylons. And I'm not sure if I'm going to use the bullpup missiles that they supply in the kit. I actually might strap two bombs. On the very end wing pylons, I might change up the loadout a little bit. But the main thing is I want the inner wing pylons to go ahead and have the fuel tanks. And I want the centerline rack, I want that to have the bombs. The end wing tip pylons, I'm unsure of yet. I may do some bombs or I may do maybe some sidewinder missiles or if I can find some sort of a jamming pod or something, if I can do that. I don't know. I don't know yet. Now, another thing we want to go ahead and take care of today, you may recognize a few episodes ago that we actually masked the canopy with Tamiya masking tape and the blue scotch painter's tape. Today, we're going to go ahead and we're going to give them a shot of color. What we're going to do is we're going to use flat black. And flat black is going to be the interior color. Now, this is a decent way to do this. It's not 100% foolproof and it's not perfect. But we're going to take flat black and we're going to airbrush it on the top of the canopy. That will actually allow it to show through on the bottom section. We don't want to necessarily paint all of the lines by hand or anything, so we're just going to airbrush it one shot. So we're going to take this blue painter's tape here, and we're going to use this to cover the inside of the canopy. We're going to use enough so that we can kind of double back over, and we can keep them all nicely stuck down so they don't blow up, and we don't accidentally shoot the inside of the canopy. Make sure that whatever surface is showing, you don't mind getting paint on. Tape the bottom sections of the middle section and the forward windscreen with the blue painter's tape, and we're going to set them aside and we're going to prep for paint. Now we're going to use just a basic flat black, and all that's going to do is give the interior a little bit of color. Now I have seen different images and different pictures of different colors used for the center part of the canopy. I've seen naval gray, I've seen black, I've seen uh, dark gray, I've seen all sorts of colors. We're going to stick with flat black. So we're just going to use Tamiya flat black, nothing fancy, and we're going to paint the exterior parts of the canopies, and we're going to paint the wheels as well. It's a good idea to go ahead and paint these guys on some sort of spindle. I don't like to paint them when they're on the landing gears because I tend to feel a lot of overspray. And it's difficult to paint the interior hubs, whatever color they're supposed to be, if they're already glued down and covered half by the exterior gear bay door. So instead, I'm going to paint them off the model. And we're going to use toothpicks cut down to size and shoved through the basic axle twist it a little bit so that they stay, and we're going to use that to go ahead and rotate those and paint them up. So we've got our flat black loaded into our airbrush, and I'm going to paint the entire wheel. So we're just going to go around the outside and the inside, and we're going to cover the entire uh, wheel in flat black. We do that exact same process with each of the three wheels. So the two main wheels are covered, and we're going to switch over to the canopy real quick. And we're just going to go ahead and paint the exterior parts of the front windscreen and the center section. Don't hold it too close and don't let it run because you want to make sure that this is evenly covered, nice and smooth. A couple of passes is all we really need. Once it's all completely covered, we are good to go. Let it dry before you pull that tape off. And yeah, it looks pretty good. Doesn't look too shabby. All right, so the other section is more or less done. We want to touch up a couple of areas here. Looking pretty decent. Now, let's talk a little bit about the wheel itself. How are we going to paint the interior hub? Well, I'm going to use this template here, and I'm going to match up the interior hub sides with one of these uh, basic round circles. Then I'm going to take my blue tape, and I'm going to take the circle. I'm going to take something sharp, like, for example, a pin vise or something, or an exacto knife, and I'm going to cut that circle out. I'm going to peel off the circle and I'm going to use the other side of the mask. This is somewhat of a reverse mask. I'm going to put it over there, burnish down the edges, and then shoot the center section. That should give us a very nice, clean line between exterior tire and center hub. 
Otherwise, I'd have to paint it by hand, and I'm not very good at painting by hand. So, if I can go ahead and mask them off and use airbrush, I'm fine with that. Now, it's been a couple hours since this has been painted, and so far, the front and center section of the canopies are dry. They are definitely good. And as you can see here, this is what we get. We get the interior canopy painted black without having to go in and mask off the interior and shoot that. Yes, it is gloss. It is not a flat black, but I'm not too concerned about that because I'm not sure if I want to have the canopy open or closed. Here's the center section, as you can see. It fits on there and uh, needs a little bit of work, but looks pretty good. There we go. Press it down. There you go. That's how it looks. Now we're going to actually install the front section there with Elmer's school glue. We're not going to attach the middle section because we still have to go ahead and do up the belts and the seat pads for the ejector seat. So we're going to leave that off for right now. To go ahead and to glue this front canopy section down, there's a couple of different glues you can use. Testers has a cement for clear plastic parts. Other manufacturers also have different types of glue. Basically, you want to stay away from using anything that's going to fog the glass. You don't want to fog up your glass. So, a little bit of glue right on a toothpick. Run that around the side. I'm just going to force that on. I'm going to hold it there. Keep some pressure on it. And a little bit takes a little longer to dry, trust me. But after a while, it's going to be good to go. The wheels are painted black. So, next time around, we're going to go ahead and we're going to mask up the wheels. Spray paint the hubs start painting. We're going to get this guy ready to go. Until then, happy modeling.